Hello, welcome to what becomes the last edition of this season of uh, the fifth quarter. I'm Mike Shiroki, sports editor of HeraldStandard.com. Joined as always by George Von Benko, WNBS radio personality and author of Memory Lane, uh, the the book and the column. Column. Uh, mm -hmm. Version two is in the works. Version, version two is in the works. It's already being copy edited as we there speak, we so it should okay. be coming out. Uh, sh uh, volume two of Memory Lane. So. Um, I, I'm just shocked that we're. This is the last edition yes. of of, uh, of the fifth quarter. I'm not used to get, being cut off this quick. No, right. <laughs> no. Uh, and uh, you know we're coming to you live and in color, and I have the gory details here in black and white. The play by play from uh, Sunday's Pittsburgh Steelers loss at Denver in the in the wild card round of the NFL playoffs. Uh, you know, there were some, some good things that happened for the Steelers. Uh, you know, the, the running game came through. Uh, the, the passing game made some plays. Uh, and, and they left some plays on the field. Too. Yeah, the defense, you know, for the, except for the second quarter, the defense did okay. Uh, it gave up a, a lot of plays in the second quarter and one play in overtime. Well, and they were on the field almost the exclusively in the whole second quarter because the offense didn't move the ball at all. Right, in the right. Quarter, yeah, so. I, uh, I made some notes. It was in my uh, in my notebook today about uh, Tim Tebow's numbers in the second quarter. Uh, just just incredible. I, I guess you could say the Steelers have now officially been Tebowed. They've been Tebowed. Well, the one thing that jumped out at me is uh, Thomas, the wide receiver. Uh, Demarius uh, Thomas. Demarius Thomas. The Steelers had not allowed a 100-yard receiver all season long. Mm -hmm. He got over 100 yards in the second quarter right. alone. Right. Yeah. And over 200 for the game. 204. The yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So I mean, there's a lot of, uh, a lot to discuss uh, from this this one game. Uh, you know, uh, the the play in overtime. Maybe we should uh, go in reverse order. The play in overtime. Uh, it's baffling to a lot of people that the Steelers had uh, pretty much 11 men in the box. Uh, it kind of daring Tim Tebow to try to beat them with his arm. Yeah, and, uh, well, and they, they exactly threw it right out there. That's exactly okay. what happened. Yeah. Uh, now, you know, is there blame to go around there? Should they have had somebody back? Uh, many people have talked to me and said that that's a, a cardinal sin not to have somebody when the only way you can lose in overtime is to give up the, the touchdown right. not to have somebody back playing a little bit deeper yeah but uh, you know what with, i Taylor who had a bad game right gave up the the play on the line of scrimmage yeah he, he, he let him get he inside also, yeah, he also yeah. missed a tackle near midfield yeah um and he he was very distraught after the game chose not to speak to the media uh, directly, uh, apparently he put a few comments up on Twitter. He tweeted, yeah. Uh, you know, a couple of things that when I look at that play specifically, the beginning of overtime, you know, they were down to three defensive linemen. That's all they had. That's right. Uh, injuries to uh, Casey Hampton and Brett Kiesel uh, just destroyed uh, John Mitchell's rotation on the D line. Uh, the linebackers did not have a good game, uh, and I'm not saying. That it's okay to crowd the line, you know. I, I'm just saying that that you know that the defense that worked in the second half, limiting Denver to three points, did not work for one play in overtime. I, you know, whether you want to start firing coordinators or anything like jumping off a bridge or whatever. And as everybody is right prone ahead, to do after out. a Steeler loss, you know, uh, yeah. everybody's right. pointing fingers right. at the coordinators and right. uh, at Tomlin and, uh, no, you know. Yeah, knowing the Rooney's the way I do, none of that's going to happen. No, uh, no. It's not, they're not going to jump off of a bridge. But that doesn't mean that there, there isn't room for some criticism. I oh, really yeah. thought that John Fox and his staff oh, out-coached his staff, oh, yeah. them. Yes, they, they, they really did. did you they know. did. Yeah. Uh, you know, with a with a little assist maybe from John Elway. Yeah, who, who told Tebow to, to pull the trigger. Pull the trigger, and, and maybe that should have been a clue uh, to everybody with the Steelers when Elway said that. That hey, maybe we ought to be worried about uh, well, you know what, uh, him throwing the ball a little bit more. But but coach, NFL coaches, I don't care what you know what your name is, how long you've been in the league, what your what your pedigree is. You go by what you see on film when you're coaching the NFL. Tebow had not shown. Even a propensity for trying to do half of the stuff that he accomplished in this game on film. Uh, you, you draw up a game plan based on what you have seen on film, and they hadn't seen any of this on film. So my hats off to uh, to John Fox and the Broncos staff 
for saying, yeah, sure, let's go. Let's go ahead. Let's try this. If what, it doesn't what, work, so what? We lose and we're out of the playoffs. What bothered me a little bit, and getting back to uh, everything is on film and people mm -hmm. know what people do, it bothered me a little bit that uh, Phil Sims on the uh, national broadcast was actually calling out some of the things that were going to happen oh, yeah? as the game progressed. <laughs> uh, I mean, every single time that the Steelers lined up with three wide receivers on one side of the field. He said it's going to be a bubble screen, and he was right every single time. Uh, now, know, if, it, if Phil Sims knows that, yeah. somebody else knows right. it, too. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone who's watched any film of the Steelers knows the bubble screen right. is a big part. Yeah. Not that it should be. And, you know, and that kind of gets to the heart of, uh, of a point I wanted to make. Today. Are they too predictable? Oh, very much so. Yeah. I, I think offensively they're very predictable. Um, but, I, you know, Mike Tomlin gets a lot of credit when, you know, he's gotten a lot of credit through his first, what, five or six years on the job, uh, been to two Super Bowls, two Super one, Bowls. one. Yeah. Uh, this was, in my opinion, if not the worst coaching job he has turned in for the season, <clears throat> at least the last month of the season, he has been very subpar. Well, I agree with you, and what bothered me was um, it was almost uh, a complacent Steeler team. It's almost you know, like, hey, you know, we're the Steelers. We, right. We're going to beat you. You guys are eight, eight. You're not that good. And that doesn't right. fly in the National you know Football League. No, <laughs> exactly. And that gets to a point I wanted to make also. Uh, going into the St. Louis Rams game, uh, that was the game when Tomlin rested Ben Roethlisberger uh, and allowed his uh, high ankle sprain to heal a little bit. Uh, he held him out of that game, and he came out with a statement that said, Basically, we have an opportunity. I know you used the word opportunity. We have an opportunity to give our quarterback some rest this week. Words to that effect. To me, that is a red flag. That is just saying, we can beat these guys without you. Don't worry about it. And, and even though they did win that game, they ended up bringing Ben back and won in Cleveland on New Year's Day. The, the, you know, the words were there. They were still out there. It's the head coach of our team telling us, meaning the players, telling us we can get through this uh, because we're better than they are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that can work against the, the Rams of the, of the league and the Browns of the league. But when you get into the playoffs, I don't care what the other team's record is. Uh, you know, ask Sean Payton from, from the Saints what happened to them last year. Against Seattle. They yeah. went to Seattle and got it handed to them. Uh, and this is right up there. I heard uh, comments on the way home. That this, it was just the worst Steelers playoff loss ever. Well, it's 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 definitely top it, five. It ranks right up there with oh, San yeah. Diego when they were ready to right. go to the Super Bowl that right. one year. Yeah. Because you heard a lot of the same yeah, kind of comments about San Diego. 94, yeah. Alfred Papunu. <laughs> yep. A name that will live in infamy. Yeah. <laughs> Him and Francisco yeah. Cabrera. <laughs> and uh, who was the linebacker? Gibson? Was it a Dennis Gibson? They knocked the, the pass down in the end zone to yes, Barry Foster. You're right, yeah. Uh, fourth down play that, that sent the Chargers. Uh, but it was a complacent team, and, and there were yeah. comments during the broadcast about you know looking at the Steelers sideline, and uh, mm -hmm. there were, there wasn't a lot of fire uh, as no. you've seen with other Steeler teams, and, and, and admittedly they were a banged up football team. Oh, very much so, and, and that is a key. That's a key part. You can't just continue to lose player after player after player, key impact player after player after player, and continue to succeed. I heard comments after the game from some Steelers insiders uh, that it could be a blessing in disguise because Casey Hampton would not have been available next week at New England, nor would Brett Kiesel have been available next weekend. Uh, Marquise Pouncey, you don't know. Um, Max Starks likely would not have he been able to participate. Name. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think the Steelers would still rather. Uh, Get the extra I, I think they'd like to have the, uh, the, uh, the opportunity to play the game rather <laughs> yeah. than go out the way they did. Yeah. That being said, uh, as bad as things went for the Steelers and they trailed 20 to 6, I thought they gave a marvelous effort yes. to come back right. and tie this football game mm -hmm. up. Then, the last minute and 37 seconds of regulation, Again, it goes to the head coach. I yes, am Fox shaking my and... head like, yeah. what? in the world yeah. are you yeah, people they, uh, they allow 22 seconds to run off the clock at right. one point mm -hmm. uh well, you know spike it or call a timeout you had two timeouts right i mean they, just they brought inexcusable them yeah they yeah. brought the timeouts on with them and uh never even got they were actually close to a very long field goal uh from sean sweezem um uh, got the ball as far as the uh never 45, Denver 45. You're looking at it maybe 
60 yard field goal, roughly 62 maybe. Something in that range. And you're playing in, that. that's why they call it mile but high. It, the ball travels a little bit you know, farther. But it, it's, it's a first and 10 at the 45. So all you need is roughly 10 more yards. Mm -hmm. uh, and well, that's it, where it, they made the mistake. That was the pass, Roethlisberger to Emmanuel Sanders, 18 yards to the 45 mm -hmm. yard line. They come up to the line of scrimmage and they do not spike the ball, and they do not call a timeout. Well, they allow how many seconds? 22 seconds to run off the clock. Yes, right. Yeah. Um, I did hear Coach Tomlin today. Uh, they, end, they ended up, they did call the timeout with 29 seconds left. Uh, they ended up uh, running what would have been, well, what was that, from a minute four down to 33? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was after that play, after yeah. the Sanders play. After the Sanders play. Well, Tomlin said that he was watching the official right on the sideline, and um, Emmanuel Sanders did, in fact, roll out of bounds on touch, which should have stopped the clock. Mm -hmm. uh, the official wound the clock. Kept the clock running, so Tomlin called a timeout there. That's, uh, he did explain yeah, that part. Uh, that, yeah, they called a timeout, uh, uh, number, that was their second, at 29 seconds. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the, the shotgun, the pass to uh, Antonio Brown. Well, here's where uh, uh, Roethlisberger sacked. It goes to 104 from 137. Then he makes that pass play to Antonio Brown for 17 yards, and they allow it to go from 104 to 33 seconds. Yeah, yeah. That's where I'm sitting there wondering what you know, spike it. I yeah, mean, do something. Do something, right? You got to save the clock a little bit. Yeah, um, but you know, take the time out. Um, yeah. You know, but like I said, like I was saying, you, you know, you, you still had would have had time, make a few plays, get a few get a few more yards uh, for Sweezy, make him a little more comfortable. And it is in the thin air at Denver. Well, the yeah. other un, un, unconscionable thing is uh, the penalty, yeah, the delay, delay of game. game. Yeah. I mean, just yeah. you can't have it in, in that situation. Coming off an incomplete pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, you know. It is what it is. Uh, we'll not go down as one of the greater moments in the Mike Tomlin era for sure. Um, but you know, as we mentioned earlier, there were some uh, were some positives. Um, we mentioned uh, Isaac Redman. Uh, Isaac Redman, 17 carries, 121 yards, made a lot of key bruising runs. I thought in the game. Well, look at that average, 7.1 yes. a carry. That's yeah. that's impressive. Mm -hmm. You know. And uh, uh, speaking of impressive numbers, I heard this earlier. Uh, Tim Tebow threw for 316 yards, or no, 319, I believe, uh, 316 mm -hmm. uh, on only 10 pass completions. On only 10 passes. So uh, that mean, there were four, or no, there were three passes over 50 yards, mm -hmm. and I forget how many over 40. Well, you know, you know, so, uh, you know uh, Coach Dick LeBeau as well as I do, his favorite stat, you know what it is? Yards per pass per attempt. Per pass attempt, yeah. yeah. Uh, Tebow and the Broncos set an NFL record. No one has ever had a yards per pass play average of 15.0 yards. Well, the one right, what was the one wide receiver's average per catch? Four catches for 204 yards. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, 51 yard average. 50, that's for pretty good. Thomas. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> That'll get you a few. But there again, it was a little bit of a different philosophy too. Because what has LeBeau's philosophy all these years been? Keep it in front of you. Mm -hmm. Don't let it get you know. And that was a little bit of a departure with and some it, of the things that happened. Yeah, you know, but but on the play, if you recall, Coach Tomlin mentioned this right after the game. Um, you know, Demarius Thomas, the receiver, made a play. He cut in front of the cornerback, cut in front of Ike Taylor, who shouldn't have allowed, allowed, him, allowed him inside <coughs> position. Should, right, shouldn't have given him the inside. Uh, and then he compounded it by not ma making a tackle, got stiff arm near stiff the 50. Arm, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, hey, players make plays in the game, you know, in this in this league. Uh, doesn't matter what your regular season record is. Uh, now, now, how much did this game mean to Tim Tebow? This win, mm -hmm. $250,000 bonus. Oh yeah? Yes. For winning a playoff game? Yeah, in his contract? Well, That's a pretty nice payday. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. I mean, it's not Mike Shiroki money, but you, know. <laughs> you get too many zeros and, on the wrong side of the decimal point. Uh, there, but uh, I mean, you know, we talked about this coming in. I mean, in my wildest dreams, I would not have imagined Tebow no, doing I mean, what he did. No, right. We both predicted it would be a close game. 
Yeah, it was a close it game. Was it was just a little bit well, more yeah. points than we thought right, it was going right. to be. <laughs> yeah, it's just how it happened that, that surprised uh, a lot of people. Um, and I think you know, the tone was set in that first quarter. You've got to get some touchdowns, not field goals. Right, right. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. Uh, the Steelers settled for field goals early in the game. Um, you know, to me, the key play in the uh, was this, the second field goal drive. Uh, I, uh, Ike Redman had been running circles around the uh, the Broncos. Uh, he got the Steelers down to a first and ten at the Bronco twenty-one. He needs a blow. They had to take him out and put John Clay in. He gets a one-yard run. Um, so, I mean... I but in that altitude, you're going to need a ball. Uh, yeah, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, no, no doubt. Yeah. Um, but it, it gets, gets back to the injuries, I guess. Um, you know, and, and this, for all the, the jamming of the line and all the 11 men in the box and all that, uh, the Broncos still managed to run for 3.9 yards a carry. Which again, I think, is attributable more to uh, the injuries on the Steelers' defensive line. There's no question it hurt. And the other thing that you know, you look at those stats, and you and I talked about it before we started talking about this. They surrendered five sacks. The Steelers did, while they didn't get one. Right. I mean, right. I, I can only remember them barely touching Tebow a couple of times. Yeah. And and, and you know, well, he's 240 pounds. He no. just ran away from people. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and one of them was later in the game, and it was Lamar Woodley who had him uh, trapped in the backfield, mm -hmm. could not make the play. Uh, the linebackers in general did not have a good game. Uh, you should look, look through the stat sheets here. James Harrison, three tackles. Uh, Lamar Woodley, two tackles. Jason Worlds, one tackle. And how many uh, times Ferry, is Harrison going to get sucked in on that play where he's supposed to have containment on the side and allow the quarterback to run right, run right around him? Yeah. That happened at least he three did. or four times. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I know they practiced it because LeBeau, had, you know, he was actually talking about, you know, facing the option yeah. when he was a player facing Bobby Douglas of the yeah. Chicago Bears, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. as a player playing. We're almost out of time. Let's get, there's going to be some really interesting decisions that have yeah. to be made during the offseason concerning the Steeler roster, uh -huh. and there's going to be some turnover. I don't think oh, yeah. there's any doubt about that. Yeah, I, th I think uh, Mike Tomlin was asked today at his season-ending press conference, uh, whether Heinz Ward may have played his last game, he, he the coach wasn't going to go there. Uh, he'll kind of let let nature take its course or whatever. Uh, but, but the list that they put up uh, the other day was, you know, uh, you wonder about Casey, whether he's going to Hampton, whether he's going to be by Heinz Ward, mm -hmm. uh, Farrier, who's mm -hmm. getting up there in years. Uh, they, they had a whole. Li you wonder about the, what is Max Starks going to be back again or not? Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, there 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 are several other players. Uh, Contrary, it's almost a given that he's probably going to sign with somebody else, uh, yeah. unless they guarantee him a third receiver spot, yeah. which I don't think no, they will I, do. No. Yeah. Hey, but I think knowing the Rooney's, I think they will gauge this based on a what became a 12 and five season, as opposed to an 0 and one playoff record. Uh, they won't put too much emphasis on this game. Um, they will make decisions uh, that uh, they believe, at least, are in the best interest of the entire. Franchise. Well, that's going to be uh, interesting to watch as it unfolds during the offseason. Very yeah, quickly, yeah. Uh, we got some games coming up, some really interesting ball games. Who do you like to, to get to the uh, uh, the Super Bowl? I, at this point, I like the uh, the big dogs. Uh, Green Bay and New England. No, not necessarily. Who? Uh, I like. You mean to get to the big game? Yeah. Uh, see, I, I was re. I thought you were talking about this weekend. Yeah. Coming yeah. Up. Well, we're I not going to beat again. Win this weekend. I, I think uh, the one I think it might be in trouble is Green Bay. I think the Giants oh, yeah. could do that. Uh, see, I, well, you mean this weekend? Yeah. I think the well, Giants could beat Green Bay, uh, okay. and they came close during the regular season. That was that last drive by mm -hmm. Aaron Rodgers. I think the Giants are peaking right now. I really yeah. think they're playing some good football. Yeah. That's going to be one of the more interesting games to watch. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, if I'm if I'm a betting guy and you put a gun to my head, I think. And I realize I'm talking chalk. I don't want to do that. I, I realize we're talking chalk. Uh -huh. I, I think it'll be uh, New England and, uh, and Green Bay. Okay. I'm looking for uh, Baltimore to beat New England at New England in the championship game. And I'm looking for the New Orleans Saints to win the championship game regardless of where it is. I, I look for New Orleans uh, to go into the Super Bowl against Baltimore, and I think New Orleans will beat them. It'll be interesting. Yes, that's it will. what they play the games for. And yes. uh, like I said, this is Been ending too quick. Here. Yeah. Yes. All right. I want to thank you all for tuning in, not only today but uh, this whole season. Uh, next stop will probably be at the Trobe uh, late July, and we will uh, pick we'll up be wearing where we shorts. Left off. 
Yeah. We'll see how many of the current Steelers are still with the Pittsburgh Steelers at that point. Until then, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, have a good year, and we'll catch you next time.